everyone welcome to the start of my winter reading vlog so this year i have been doing seasonal vlogs where i read books that have the season in the title or are themed around the season and obviously being in the southern hemisphere my seasons are different to the majority of my viewers so that's another reason to be doing a vlog like this so it's a little bit fun it's a little bit different let's take the headphones off from around my neck i'm still finishing off a book that i'm not going to be reading for this vlog but yeah i thought i would start kick off this vlog this weekend i have the last home game for my ice hockey team for the season so the mustangs play the sydney ice dogs tomorrow so i'll get some footage from that that's that's winter right <laughs> uh and yeah i don't know if there's going to be too much else that i'm doing just because it's been really cold and i also haven't been feeling a hundred percent but at the very least you'll have a couple of books that are very winter themed at least to my mind so the one that i'm going to start with tonight is the winter queen by jay gala which is jessica gaziella's pen name this is a why choose romance and i received an arc of it like when it first came out which was gosh i can't even remember january last year anyway so we're going to read that one i also have bear town by frederick Bachman that i really want to read so that'll probably be sunday's read so i've got a little bit more time to unpack it because i think that one's gonna i'm gonna need to sit with that one for a bit otherwise i just have some other books that i might try and get to like the midwinter mail order bride by katie wilde which i've had for ages on my kindle and then you know just a couple of other random things that i found while searching on amazon or through my kindle that may or may not get read so we're going to aim for about three books hopefully the three that i named but if not you know we might change it up but yes i have dinner on at the moment i've got a book that i need to finish i've got about an hour in the well less than an hour in the audio because i'm listening to it very very fast but yeah i thought i would show you some random things so i got some book mail today from alan and unwin so some more review titles these are all uh, in, from their children's catalogue. So there's a picture book, there's a middle fiction, and then there is a young adult. So the first one is South with the Seabirds, Follow Four Remarkable Scientists to the Edge of the World by Jess McEachin. Then there is Brave Poor and the Heartstone of Luria, which is by L.M. Wilkinson, which is Lily Wilkinson. She also writes Young Adult, and I've reviewed a couple of her books in the last couple of years. But this is her middle fiction title so i'm looking forward to trying that one and then gary lonsborough's newest book which is i'm not really here all three of these books are coming out in september at the start of september i really enjoy gary lonsborough's work he writes queer indigenous stories and they are honestly delightful often very hard hitting and at times confronting i don't know so much about this one i just saw his name he's now an auto read author for me so i'm like please please and thank you i will read this and review it for you so thank you again to ellen and i for that and then this afternoon i've been busy preparing and practicing a couple of projects because next week i am leading a professional development session with our staff around book week which is coming up from the 17th until the 23rd of august where we will be doing some book themed crafts based off a workshop that i did with um a company called Zardart who are basically art suppliers for Victorian schools or schools around Australia. Anyway every year they do a book week themed workshop every year I just buy it for myself and participate because I like book crafts and I like having activities up my sleeve and I, uh, I did manage to convince my leadership to let me run the sick with the staff which we used to always do but we haven't done it for the last couple of years. So some of these I have done previously uh, and then this afternoon I was just finishing off a few things. So we have these really cute pop-ups but the really cool thing is this is kind of like sandpaper it's sensory paper and you use pastels on it and it's like drawing on concrete and it goes with a book called the concrete garden by bob graham which is absolutely gorgeous and is about you know kids drawing on concrete uh there is this cool little 3d artwork which is from i'm mentally blanking on the name can you teach a fish to climb a tree and this book is all about you know recognizing your strengths but it's also really cool because you get to make little fish in a tree both of those we're going to make in the session with the staff the other one we're going to make with staff are these little people stands this is from that bird has arms and it's all about uh, recording traits or strengths or hobbies or things that you are known for it's um sh you're really coming up with your identity so they're fun the little stands yes ice hockey is on there because of course it is and then some of the other activities that I did through the workshop. So some of these weren't part of the workshop, they were just part of the pack 
of um, ideas that they gave us. Basically, my school agreed to run the workshop because I, we were going to do things that link in with our well-being program as well. So link in with the books, link in with book week, link in with well-being and connecting books and art. They actually had slap bands, which I haven't thought about slap bands since I, since I was a kid. Anyway, these were for the book Timeless, which I have talked about many, many times across both my channels as being one of my favorite picture books of last year. If it doesn't win, I'm going to be so sad. But the idea was to create a slow project. So that was, you know, making your own slap bands out of felt and sewing. And their, their projects had you know, making it into a watch because the book's all about time, using beads and whatever. And in the end, I just hand sewed it with the book title on there. And it does work because there's the little actual slap band inside it. There it is. And of course, I had a spare one. <laughs> so I made a Mustangs one. Are we shocked? Absolutely not. Uh, there is this wrapped bear. This one is from Bear and Duck of Friends, I think. Bear and something. Must be Baron Ducker friends. Anyway, this one is just a, another mindful activity of just wrapping a little cardboard bear with wool. And it's very cute. This craft was from One Little Duck. And this one was actually printing little duck shapes using paper towel. And then I just create a little background to stick them on. This one's supposed to be so you don't have heaps of materials. You can use tissues or paper towel and just some paint palettes to create little duck shapes. Obviously I've got all of these because I will show the staff all of them. We'll make some of them and then they'll get to choose which ones they want to do from the entire option list. One of the ones I did this afternoon was this one, so this comes from a book called Grace and Mr. Milligan, where Grace and Mr. Milligan are next door neighbors and they love to have picnics. And these are some of their favorite foods, but one of the things that they both really like is always having a dollop of cream. So this is a 3D artwork and it has some air dry cream layers. And then the last one, and I'm hoping that we get a chance to do this. It depends how long the other activities take us. It's actually just a mindfulness, mindfulness med meditative um, thing for the book The Paper Flower Girl where there are some just beautiful turns of phrase and descriptions in there and you just kind of read them out and then people choose colors and draw designs that in their head match that description but they create the most beautiful patterned papers which you can then turn into other things. I do feel like this has a lot of white in the background. I kind of want to go over it with some watercolor but I'm going to leave it because I do also really like it. <laughs> Would also make good wrapping paper. So that has been my afternoon finishing off a couple of those projects and organizing them so that they are all ready for next week. Tonight I'm going to read The Winter Queen and after I have some dinner I will update you on how that is going. have to turn the heater off otherwise you can hear it otherwise it's freezing I need the heater back on so this is going to be fast uh the winter queen is a why choose story I don't quite know where it's set um because it is about a young woman who is being sent off to be married to the king of another kingdom it is a winter kingdom it snows there all the time on the way there uh she is not accustomed to the winter well it's not even winter it's autumn I want to say when she arrives and she is freezing cold and uh, that's the the first of her problems the king she's marrying is very old and very unwell and is in need of an heir and once they marry he basically tells her and his most trusted guard Cyprian that he wants them to sleep together and produce an heir because he can't do it anymore so you know she is attracted to the king's guard her guard Warwick is also someone that she cares a lot about and also her lady's maid is in love with her. So, you know, it, there's there's a whole lot of stuff going on in this book. But it's very much Jessica Gaziella and her books are intensely readable. They're very fast to get to and you know exactly what you're going to get. Are they the best things ever written? No, but they're good fun and highly enjoyable. So yeah, also Warwick gives Marielle a puppy, like a fluffy white fluff ball puppy. I love the dog. The dog needed to be in it more. I will be back with this vlog when I'm reading the next book tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to read tomorrow. Uh, well, no, I said I was going to read Bear Town on Sunday. So whatever I pick up tomorrow is what I'll talk about, along with whatever footage I remember to take on the way to the hockey. <laughs> Thompson, 
Hi guys, so it is now the next day. I don't think I've updated you today at all. Anyway, I am like 40% of the way through the midwinter mail order bride. Uh, I'm gonna, oh God, I've still got my lanyard on. Um, I'm gonna finish that in a little bit. I just got back from our last home game for the season. We won. So nice to end our home season. On a win we have two more games left in new south wales so they're going on a road trip next weekend then we have a week off then we have the finals we are not in the finals i'm very sad but i am going to the finals weekend i have a whole three-day weekend six no five games of hockey in three days i'll be going to that uh but i was glad to see that we won our last home game and it's really cool because they do a jersey presentation the players give their jerseys to their sponsors for the season and they get to keep them so that was really fun to see and yeah it was a good game dad came with me he's missed the last three or four games i think so he got to come to the last one and i got him to wear a jersey so <laughs> i was happy about that but yes actually i don't think i've shown you guys this one so this is my new jersey so this is our pride game jersey so 24 and uh my one is signed Anyway, I'll take a proper photo of it later. I love this jersey so much. The, have I shared this story? I don't know. Let's come closer for story time, shall we? Last year, my first game that I ever went to in Australia for ice hockey was the Mustangs Pride game. So that was way back at the end of May last year. That year, all the players wore Pride jerseys and then they auctioned them off afterwards. And I was kicking myself that I didn't buy one. So we get through the whole of last year, I did buy, that was when I bought my, no, my away jersey. So I had one jersey at the end of last season and now I own like six. So then I was waiting for the Pride game this year and I wasn't sure whether the players were going to wear the Pride jerseys or whether um, they were just going to have a couple of special one-offs. But sometimes for specialty games, they just print like three in a medium, a large and an extra large and then they auction them off. Anyway, so this season they just printed the limited edition ones and auctioned them off. So I won the auction for the size that I'm wearing and then all the players signed the back of it. This one's really cool because I'm pretty sure it's designed by the wife of one of the players. Looks like this. And then it has everyone's signatures. And then Georgie's is up the top because he's special. He puts his up. Didn't put his with everyone else's. But that's okay. That's my story time. I got my jersey. I picked it up last week. It was the one jersey that I, re I really just wanted a pride jersey. I own now a bucket load of others. This is the one that I wanted. <laughs> so uh, we have like football day coming up at, in, in September before the end of term. And I never wear football colors. And since last year, now I just wear hockey things and I don't know which jersey to wear. I really don't. <laughs> I have a problem. I am going to have a shower. It's just after nine o'clock. Then I'm gonna finish the midwinter mail order bride. I'll check in when I've read some more because you're probably sick of all the hockey talk. 
All right, so I finished the midwinter male order bride and it was fine. I mean, fantasy romance is not my go-to, so you know, for what it was worth, it was good. Uh, it is about Kale, who is a barbarian king who basically conquered the previous king. And so he has a reputation of basically being a butcher. And at the start of the book, he finds out that a wife has been sought for him. And her, her name is Anya. She comes from a, from a magic people. And the one thing I did like about this book is that in this world, magic scales so if you perform magic it impacts other things so you cannot create something out of nothing it affects other things so if you heal someone more than likely something or someone around you is going to be injured or hurt or drained or whatever anyway so that's really interesting so she is thought to be a sorceress and kale doesn't want a wife who is afraid of him he's a big guy and he recognizes straight away that she's there and she is not really there of her own free will and so he rejects her and then he finds out that through there's a, a whole bunch of circumstances leading up to her coming to him and one of them being that she saw a magic spider in her um, in her castle with her parents and he offers to come back and help her kill it and in doing so take her home and so they embark on this trip back to her home and that we find out more about both of them along the way it's interesting because part of it i just found really slow but there was a lot of interesting things going on including topics about what makes a king and what makes magic and what is what is actual magic and uh like some of those conversations were really great but then of course we find out that you know this spider is linked to something that was done to Anya and between the two of them they're able to to stop it and then sort of that's that's the end most of it most of this book is a road trip it was it was fun it was relatively well written I just think it was probably a little bit slow in places uh, for something that was only 180 pages but I mean it's been on my TBR for ages so I'm I'm glad I've read it and uh, it does fit in with the cozy winter theme because everything was pretty cold so yes I will check in when I get to Bear Town. Hi everyone we are back well I am back to this vlog it's been about a week since I read anything for the winter vlog mostly because during the week I got distracted by other things that I had to read and do uh it is Saturday it is nice and sunny outside let's see if it'll let me turn the camera around very bright and sunny but the sun does not equal warmth <laughs> not at this time of year this morning I had a live show with Megan and Heather I have got some candles on I have got well a cold drink just because I'm trying to hydrate it's orange juice and uh like a orange and passion fruit mineral water i have my frederick barkman book i think i'm ready to start diving into it i'm a little bit apprehensive like i again this is such a well-known very popular book one of the, my colleagues at work actually told me that she'd been reading it and she was loving it i get nervous with really popular books we're gonna do it we're gonna start reading it there is hockey today but not here in in melbourne uh well not for me my team is playing in Newcastle today and the Central Coast tomorrow, which is in New South Wales. So I will be watching it later on on our on their streaming app, AHL TV. There may be footage of me watching hockey. I am mentally preparing for the game. We are going to dive into this. I don't really know much about anything except it's set in a small town. Hockey is the big thing in the town. There is, I think it's an, a sexual assault in the book. There's something that happens that basically horrifies and draws the town together, I believe. Anyway, we're gonna start reading and see how corrupt or incorrect what I know about this book is. All right, so I'm just over 100 pages in. In fact, I think I'm 103, 103 pages in. So we follow a lot of characters. It is excellent. I've, I don't know if you guys can see that. Lots of tabs already in the first 100 pages. The writing is great. Frederick Bachman's writing style is really engaging considering that we are constantly jumping point of view characters like every four or five paragraphs. Yeah, it's set in this small Swedish town. It's very remote, it's in the middle of a forest and essentially the entire town re revolves around their hockey culture, their junior and A grade teams. And the junior team is about to play in the semi-finals and it's the first time they've really had a chance at making a name for themselves like in years. And it's a huge thing for them. So we follow GM, we have one of we have the junior team coach we have the a-team coach you have players there's a 15 year old player Amart. you have kevin who is the star of the junior team benji who is a defenseman on the junior team and then you have various other characters so you have the gm's wife and his daughter maya and like everyone's sort of stories are leading up to this and essentially david who is the coach of the junior team is going to do anything to get the junior team to win 
And so what happens is he realize like he's made the realization that in order to beat the team that they are playing against, they need someone with speed on their team. Like Kevin is the superstar of the team, but they don't they need someone fast. And so Amart, who is 15, has just been told that he is training with the junior team and and this is the day before the game. Something else that I forgot to mention in here, and I won't go into it too much in too much detail now because it's this is just an editing clip. But the book also does look at class difference because Amart comes from a traditionally poor family. His mother is the janitor at the ice rink where he where he does his training. And so like it does look at the haves and the have nots as well in, in included in all of this and how people perceive them. So yeah, just interesting, I thought I'd mention it. And so there's a, there's a lot in here around life in a small town, life in a small isolated town, the way people judge people for their decisions, the way that you are known by the mistakes that you have made in the past and the mistakes that you currently make or the way that you don't succeed in the way that people expect you to. So it's, it's really fascinating. I'm really enjoying it. I just a, it's a slower read than normal and because every time we change a character I just have to mentally check that I'm remembering which character is and where, where they are in the story. There's a lot of backwards and forwards with the story and the like the very first chapter is just really brief and it, it starts at the end which is to say that a teenager picks up a shotgun and walks into the forest and fires at someone else. We don't know who any of the characters are at that point but it just you know that one paragraph ends with this is the story of how we got there. So we're obviously going to the next figure out where we get there. I will say there is bullying and homophobic comments on page as well as questionable coaching methods. Definitely very interesting. I will read a little bit more and keep you updated. Okay, so I am now 207 pages into Bear Town. Still great, still very hard hitting. Literally just gotten to the essay scene. It's one of those weird things where I, I for the first bit of the book, I wasn't 100% certain who was going to be involved in, in this. We, we get some pretty significant clues about who the victim is and it clearly looks like we're going, I mean thankfully, we're going to be looking at the impact of victim blaming in this situation because the perpetrator is exactly the person that you would expect it to be in a town where you place all of your expectations on a child and that child is never told that what he does is wrong. And what I like that Frederick Bachman has set up so far in here is in the moments leading up to it is how we see the dynamics of all of the characters and the groups that we think are solid from the start of the book are going to shift. Meanwhile you have the best friend pairing between Kevin and Benji which you see the cracks of right before everything kicks off. Benji doesn't even know what's happened, to, well no one knows what's happened at this point. And the line in the sand that Benji has that Kevin doesn't. And it's so interesting. Like this is way more lit fic than I ever read, but like, I'm very deeply compelled to just keep on reading. But I need to um, have a shower and then get ready because the hockey will start in about 45 minutes and I want to possibly start cooking dinner before then. I will uh, keep you posted as I read more. I'm done with this but uh hockey game update we lost quite badly nine to two here's the thing I've, I've said before we can't get into finals like our season's done so we have one more game left and they literally used it I think to play out some very different lines and different combos of people uh so our first line center for the year is also our head coach so we have a player coach he did not play at all tonight he just stayed on the bench and he is our biggest scorer. What I've suspected through the season is that he's been reducing his ice time, moving more into the coaching role and trying to, you know, like any good coach would, upskill other players. So that meant one of my favorite players, Flack, who is normally our second line center, played first line center. He also got our two goals. So, hey. <laughs> um, so it's nice to see him sort of get that recognition because he's, he's a fantastic player as well. We also uh, were missing our probably the most successful defenseman and a bunch of other players who didn't travel with the team. 
So they, they had a debut on the team as well and and they certainly didn't play badly, but you could see that they were there were some very, very different lines playing tonight. So uh, it was interesting to watch because everything says we're actually looking to next year and looking to how things are going to play out. Back to the book. Uh, well, this is a emotional gut punch, right? So of course everything that you expect happens in a book that deals with a star hockey player in a town that pins all of its hopes and dreams on hockey and in this player in particular when he rapes a girl and in particular the, well spoilers, um, the daughter of the GM for the team and basically it's his word against hers and of course who does, does everyone believe? The man because patriarchy and all of those discussions are so it's so good because there are characters who implicitly know that he's lying and like they they know it they just can't prove it and one of them is his best friend who while kevin might have been a star on the team benji is probably the better leader on the team then you have other players really having to take a stand or draw a line in the sand and so many of them don't but you also have the entire town the entire town has pinned all of its hopes and dreams on this one team and now anyone who says anything against this kid is wrong and what I found really interesting is that in the second half of the book we really don't get a lot of Kevin's perspective which in the first part we do and I liked that because we don't need his perspective because we know he's guilty instead what we get is everyone around else around him the really scary thing is that all of them know that he did it by the end of the book they all know because there was someone who witnessed it but because he was a kid and because he was drunk and because he had a crush on the girl he's not a credible witness but he's able to tell them in detail what he saw and he tells the entire members group of the hockey club and Matt is one of my favorite characters Benji is just amazing I I actually I own book two I'm not going to go into it this weekend I think this is this is <laughs> This is 100% a series that I'm going to need breaks from because I wasn't sure what this book was about because of the way that the first book ended. But essentially what happens is, you know, they they lose the final to their biggest rival, which is the capital city team of the, the place where they live. Basically at the end of this book, a bunch of the players from the town switch over to playing hockey for the other team. And this team, this book I think is a rivalry as they, they play again, because essentially like the events of Bear Town break the town and break the hockey club and for as much gaslighting goes on in this book around the actual victim <laughs> in, the, in the story you begin to see the women of the town really start to go okay hang on we've we've let things go too long now and now we're going to step up the other thing that bear town has in it uh, benji is gay there's a lot of casual homophobia thrown around in the book there's also ma uh, major bullying of another side character including a lot of fat shaming but yeah so Benji is gay he does have a brief relationship during the course of this book and eventually his coach finds out he sees Benji with this guy and makes it all about himself like Benji doesn't know that David's seen him but David makes it all about himself his internal oh oh I wasn't a good enough coach he didn't feel like he could trust me blah 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 well no no wonder because the culture that you led in the locker room was toxic AF <laughs> is the most polite way to say it yeah no Benji wouldn't tell you anything because you joined in the jokes you laughed you actively participated in them no way is he going to tell you and that is a hundred percent on you not on him so you don't get to sit there and feel like oh oh Mm, that's your fault. I really hope there's this this last little scene is the thing in Bear Town is that there's no girls hockey and so many of the side characters played hockey including Benji's older sisters so he is basically raised from what I gather by his older sisters and they all played hockey but they had to stop either from injury or because they just couldn't keep traveling to another town to go and, and train. The book ends with one of Benji's sisters actually going around trying to find girls who are interested in learning how to play hockey and the last part of the book is this little four-year-old girl's first time on the ice and the book leaves us off with the fact that you know many years in the future this girl is actually the most famous thing to come out of the town so I'm hoping at some point maybe we get some more of her story like obviously it won't be in here because this seems like it's the next year or a year after or whatever but there is a third book I would like I, I would like her story I was like reading about female hockey players 
I need more of those, please. Any any kind of hockey books with female hockey players is, is what I want. So that's it. This is my winter reading vlog. It feels really weird to say I had a, a great time reading all of these books because this is quite heavy. I'm really glad I tried Frederick Bachman because his writing is great. Like this is a long, long book. And I mean, the writing is mostly regular size, but it's it's still a lot of, like there's still a lot of text on the page. And it did take longer to read because of the content and be, but the actual style of writing, like I didn't want to put it down. Like I just had to keep reading to find out what was going to happen. And this, his style of writing won't work for everyone. Not everyone likes jumping um, point of views every couple of paragraphs, especially when it's not at the start of a chapter, like every chapter you are constantly in the point of view of multiple characters at the same point, sort of navigating the same issues. I actually really enjoyed it because I don't read books like that very often. <laughs> so there's that. And I had a good time, but yes, I will be reading this and talking about it soon and I will need to get my hands on a copy of the third book because I will want to have this set, I think. By far and away, this was my favourite book of the vlog. Could I have predicted that? Maybe, but also it had the potential to go really badly for me just because it is not a genre that I read all of the time. I think it's really worth it if you haven't read it and you're at all interested in small towns and small town politics and the way that small, like, everyone congregates around something that defines the town like it's so isolated and the people just have nothing else but to focus on on hockey i mean it could be anything like you could substitute any kind of sport or whatever in a small town kind of setting but because this is a small isolated town in the middle of nowhere it's cold it has that atmosphere and yeah you just you, you don't know what a character is going to do next or how they're going to react and I thoroughly enjoyed that experience. <laughs> so uh, that is it for me. I think I've rambled on long enough. I will be doing a spring vlog at some point, maybe in September when I'm on holidays, if I remember to do it early enough. Otherwise it will be later than that, but I will definitely be doing one. So I'll have to see if I have any spring themed books or you can feel free to leave some recommendations down below that I can explore before I um, start making any plans. From me and my drink, I hope that everyone is doing well and that you are staying safe and healthy wherever you are. Feel free to have a chat to me about any of the books down below, but otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye everyone.